All right. Uh, let's see if this actually continues to work. 4.4, 4, uh, the by far most fun section of all our Chapter 4. It's integration <clears throat> by what we call use substitution, and I'll tell you more about that here in a second, or pattern recognition is what I call it, just by looking at an integral and saying, I recognize the pattern. I know what the antiderivative is. So <clears throat> this section goes back to now indefinite integrals, how to find antiderivatives uh, in, in, in a sense. And remember that uh, there is no product rule, there is no quotient rule, there is no chain rule for integration or antidifferentiation like there is for derivatives. So the process is going to involve a lot of different strategies. Not rules, but strategies. One of the few rules we have, of course, is the power rule. Everything else is a strategy which involves recognizing an expanded derivative and being able to then predict where that came from. So uh, this section is going to be particularly of interest when we're trying to uh, package back up the chain rule derivative, right? Remember when we take the derivative using the chain rule, we have multiple layers, composite function, and we keep multiplying by derivatives of subsequent layers. And each time we multiply by another inside function's derivative, those pieces, those factors get smaller and smaller and smaller. So in that essence, it's like unpacking boxes. Let's go ahead and review that process on example one. It says to evaluate the derivative with respect to x of tangent of e to the 4x squared. Okay, review. So this is definitely a composite function. How many layers do we have? Well, there's two inside functions inside the third layer, which is tangent. So the outer layer is tangent. And then if you work inside one layer, you have the E layer. And then uh, the innermost layer is 4x squared. So if you remember then, with three layers, how many factors will we have in our derivative? Three, right? And we took the derivative by working from the outside in. So what's the derivative of tangent of blob? Secant squared of the blob. Okay, cool. Times the next layer, I'll switch flavors here to beefy brown, e to the blob's derivative is e to the blob times the natural log of e, right, which we don't need because it's 1, and then times the derivative of the innermost layer, which is 8x. Yeah. So notice then if we had three layers, we have three factors, 1, 2, and 3. And as we go from left to right, the factor groups, as they really are, uh, they get smaller and smaller, meaning they contain less and less information. The, the biggest factor is secant squared of e to the 4x squared. That's the first one we took. So it, it has more information. It's a bigger factor. The next smallest factor is e to the 4x squared. It still has two layers in there. And the smallest factor group was the last one we took, uh, 8x. So in this uh, sense, you could think of unpacking boxes. We, we had this big box and we unpacked it, and inside that big box, we had a smaller box, and then inside that smaller box was yet another smaller box. So kind of like Russian nesting dolls. They were all inside of each other, and we just kind of set them out next to each other, and they got smaller as we went. Of course, once we have the derivative, we always then went to the next line and just kind of cleaned it up a little bit to make it look more presentable. And that would look like this, right? Okay, so that's one thing going forward. What we're going to focus on now is how do we go in reverse. So let's jump to example two. If I ask you to evaluate now the indefinite integral, it's indefinite because we do not have intervals of integration. See that? It's just then what is the antiderivative of this thing here with respect to x. Man, if you look at it, you've got one factor here, another factor there, and another factor there. Three factors. Can we use the product rule for integration? No, because it doesn't exist. So what, we, what it comes down to is we have to recognize that monster with all those factors as the derivative of something. Does anyone know what we take the derivative of to get that? Yeah, if you have a relatively decent short-term memory, uh, you will realize that that right there is exactly that right there. And we know what we took the derivative of to get that. It was tangent of e to the 4x squared. 
Therefore, since the derivative integrals are inverses, the antiderivative of that should be tangent of e to the 4x squared. But of course, we make the allowance that there could have been some constant in the beginning that we were unaware of. And there's the answer. So this section is going to be really, really easy because you're always going to be given something to take the derivative of first and then immediately ask to find the antiderivative so you know what the answer is, right? Is that how it's going to work? No, that's not how it's going to work. The challenge or the fun, I should say, in this section comes down to if you're not given example one, but rather you're just given this, how are you supposed to recognize that the antiderivative of that whole thing there with three factors is just tangent of e to the 4x squared? Yeah, well, it comes down to knowing how the chain rule works, right, and being able to recognize an expanded chain rule and how to package it back up. So let me kind of walk you through that idea there. When you take the derivative again using the chain rule, you multiply from a single function, right? A single function, you multiply by all of its inner function's contents. So you first take note that you have one, two, three factors, right? And knowing that the factors get smaller, uh, as you unpack them, you want to look for the ultimate big box because you're trying to package everything back up into the biggest box. So step one, look for the biggest, bulkiest factor that contains the most information. Which one of those three factors is the biggest, bulkiest looking factor? Secant squared, either four x squared. Okay, so once you identify the biggest, bulkiest factor, here's what you're gonna do. All the other factors then, whether there's two factors like in this case, or just one or sometimes three or four, all of those other factors had to be generated from the chain rule when you took the derivative of the inside function, right? So you want to identify then the inside function and the outer function. So if you walked up to this problem, uh, this last factor, sorry, you might notice right away a secant squared of blob. That secant squared of blob is going to involve the biggest box. We're going to call that the outside function. There can only be one rule of integration, and it's going to involve the outside function of the biggest factor. Now, what is inside the outside function? It looks like it's e to the 4x squared. That's what we're going to call the inside function. And so here's what you're going to do now. You're going to check, did all of the other factors in that integrand come from me unpacking the inside function's contents by way of the chain rule. Well, here's how you check. What is the derivative of e to the 4x squared? e to the 4x squared. So when I took the derivative of this inner big box inner contents, I generated this factor here. So that's where that factor came from. Well, that inside function has its own inside function. What's the derivative of 4x squared? 8x. And that's where that came from. So I have correctly identified the big box into which everything is going to go and the inside function that has the contents of all the rest of the boxes. So when you take the derivative by the chain rule, you are unpacking them. When we take the antiderivative, here's what it's going to look like. The 8x gets packaged back up inside the 4x squared, and now it's gone. It gets packaged back up. The e to the 4x squared gets packaged back up into that box, and now it's gone, All right? So we put the little box into the slightly bigger box, and we took that box that contains both of them now, and we put it back inside the big box. And now all we're staring at is secant squared of blah. So once you do that, now it's time for the actual integration process. You're going to integrate the big box. What is the antiderivative of secant squared of blah? What's the antiderivative of secant squared? Tangent of that, that blob. And then, of course, you put plus C. So that's the pattern recognition. Doesn't matter how many factors you have, two, three, four, five, six. Only one of them is going to contain the big box that's going to get anti-differentiated. 
and everything else inside of it has to be the contents whose derivatives generate all of the other factors, okay? Now, the good thing about anti-differentiation, if you remember, or indefinite integration, is you can think of it as a guess, check, and revise process. So as you're doing your worksheet on this section, especially initially, I would suggest you check, right? Let's do it mentally. You walk up to the problem. We've already did this on example one. The derivative of the tangent blob is secant squared of the blob. Times the chain rule, e to the blob generates e to the blob. Times the chain rule, the derivative of 4x squared is 8x. And of course, c goes to zero. So you know you have it. So that right there is what I call integration by pattern recognition. It's understanding the chain rule expanded and being able to package it back up before you take the antiderivative. There can only be one rule for the antiderivative, and it's going to always contain the outer function of the biggest factor, okay? You can read all this, blah, 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 blah. Let's jump to example four. Um, no, example three. There you go. <laughs> it says to evaluate the indefinite integral of x squared plus 1 to the 12th power times 2x dx. Okay, forget the instructions. First things first is you notice there are two factors, right? And there is no product rule for integration. So you either have to, A, expand out x squared plus 1. You want to do that? To the 12th power? No. So then you want to say, okay, well, maybe, maybe this is an expanded chain rule. The bigger, bulkier factor is x squared plus 1 12. So if you walk up to it, the first thing you would encounter is blob to the 12th, right? That's going to be your outside function. The contents then of blob to the 12th, which are x squared plus 1, that's going to be your inside function. So here's what you're going to check. The first step of this process is to take a derivative, to check. Did the 2x other factor come from the chain rule when we took the derivative of this inside function? Well, what's the derivative of x squared plus 1? 2x. Yes, indeed it did. It's exactly where it came from. So we're ready to find the antiderivative. This 2x now gets packaged back up inside, and it's gone. And now we're ready for the second part, which is the rule of integration, which involves the outside function. What's the antiderivative of blob to the 12th? Yeah, blob to the 13th divided by 13 or times 1 13th. And you just put x squared plus 1 in there plus c. And that's your guess, right? That's your crude guess. Check it by taking the derivative, right? If you took the derivative, 1 13th blob to the 13th, you would multiply to get 1, x squared plus 1 to the 12th. That takes care of the big factor, times the chain rule, 2x, boom, c goes to 0. There it is. You know it's correct. Pretty easy, pretty fun. Now, when we get back from lunch, we have about another minute here. That's the method that I call pattern recognition. There is a former, formal sorry, process called U substitution. Um, and it works every time when pattern recognition does. The idea behind U substitution is you're going to take the letter U, which is an arbitrary variable, not X, and you're going to substitute your inside function which could involve more than one term, more than one factor. It's something more than plain old x. You're going to substitute a function of x with a single letter u to make the problem less cluttered, right, contain less information. And the idea behind that is then you can rely on previously known integration rules and get to the same answer by a formal process, by an algorithm. And I'll show you that after lunch. So. Um, Anyway, I would hope that you start developing the pattern as we'll look at more examples after lunch because it's quick, it's fast, and it's really a lot of fun. If you think Sudoku is fun, if you think spelling bees are fun, if you think crossword puzzles are fun, this is, this is right up there with, with the best of them. So anyway, there is no bell. We're on lunch, so go ahead and uh, head on to lunch.